It's part two of our conversation with Holly's drummer, Bobby Elliott. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. It Ain't Heavy, It's My Story is the brand new Bobby Elliott book on his life with the Hollies. There'll be links in the description of this video where you can pick it up. I just finished talking to Rod Argent and Colin Blundstone about the, uh, from the zombies of the, you know, the, the British invasion. There was only a handful of big bands and you guys were certainly part of it. Um, were you... Uh, yeah, I, well, I love those two guys. I, I, I saw Blundstone on the, on the, and Rod on the... Uh, we, the, let me see, it was about two or three years ago, yeah. there was an exhibition in, on, uh, in Liverpool, and it was, it was a Brit British Invasion exhibition, the Grammy British Invas Invasion exhibition that had been set up by the Americans, but it was in a pier head in Liverpool, mm. right? So I had, a, I had a, a few, we had a, glass, a couple of glass cases there with Holly's exhibits inside. And this was in this Beatles um, convention area as well, but there was all, all sorts of stuff there. But what I'm getting round to is that when, when, we, when that show had finished, there was a, a little cruise on the on the Mersey, on one of the Mersey uh, river boats, you know, ferry across the Mersey thing, mm -hmm. and the zombies were playing on there. So, so Colin, Colin was there. I know these guys from way back, and there I am uh, having a pint, a pint of ale, watching these guys as we as we swear about on the River Mersey. And, and may I say that Blunston's voice is just as good as it ever was. He was terrific. It's uncanny. Uh, Rod was telling me they both have the the same vocal coach. Where that uh, uh, he sings uh, a time of the season in a slightly different way, but it actually works better the way he sings it now. I mean, it's amazing. Well, it, you're probably right. I didn't know they had vocal coaches, but I tell you one thing that really moves me every time I hear it. I don't believe in miracles, which uh, yeah. uh, 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 Blunston sings. Yeah. I don't believe in miracles. Oh, would... No, I don't believe in I love that song. That was actually a hit. It, just, it, it just... wasn't with the zombies. It was one of his solo It was solo hits. hit. You must listen to that. It's... it's, it's it's quite quite moving. I'm very familiar with it, yeah, and I uh, I think Russ Ballard wrote that, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, I know Russ as well, because I knew the roulettes. I, Bob Henry, uh, Bob Henry, the drummer, was a friend of mine, or he's a friend of mine, I've seen for years. So. Uh, Russ, I knew, and, uh, yeah, I used to hang out with those guys. Uh, when they were, they, they were backing a guy called Adam Faith over here. Mm. Do you, uh, uh, there's a piece we'll use for the, the current tour. I mean, in some ways, the fact that you followed, you followed Tony into the Hollies and you guys knew each other and you have that family connection. I mean, isn't it kind of appropriate that you guys are the last two original members standing in the Hollies? It's kind of, rom it's, it's kind of a beautiful rock and roll dream when you look at it. Well, it is. I mean, it's a, as I say, it's, it's a, it's a family affair, but we, we we think the same way. We, we, we even now, well, it's probably got stronger. We've got an, an understanding on stage. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't call Tony a jazzer, but he's, he's, he's an, an instinct player. And when we're doing a bit of free form stuff, like sometimes we mess around a bit at the start of stop, 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 and he'll, and he'll try and surprise us with some some fancy banjo work, if you can believe it. Uh, it some r strange rhythms he'll play. And and, uh, and and he'll try and surprise me with, with something different. So we, we, we have that banter, we have that mental, uh, that, 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 that mental sort of empathy, that's a spiritual, almost a spiritual thing, you know, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, uh, we, we're very understated. Tony's a very modest guy. He, 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 he doesn't like to sort of, I was going to say blow his own trumpet, but he's a guitar player, isn't he? Uh, but he, he's, uh, is 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 different is Tony yeah, and he's uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a joy to work with him. I've talked to obviously a lot of rockers of your ilk, your age group, who decided to you know do their autobiography. Uh, Bobby, for you, what was the catalyst that told you, well, I should get this on paper? Uh, mainly the rest of the guys in the band and, and friends because. Uh, since I was a kid, uh, I've been keeping diaries. Uh, uh, my father kept diaries, so me as a small child had a diary, and it got bigger and bigger. As obviously, I came into the business, and uh, it's got all the details in there where the bodies are buried and everything. So, uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, after show me recounting tales in, in in the bar, and everybody saying, "Well, you, you've got to write a book," so. As I say, about four years ago, maybe a little bit more, I, I sat down and started writing, tapping away on my computer, my laptop, uh, with two fingers, and I did the whole thing myself. 
the I read about that and I thought that you didn't take the easy way out, but it's more organic because I mean, after all, you're the guy who lived it, right? Well, sure, yeah. I mean, I I, I just uh, uh, it, uh, it came from the heart, uh, and it starts when I was born, and I know I, you know, I was born during the war in the World War Two, and and the hardship of uh, rationing and all that stuff. It grows out of that. And now I heard, I first realized that I wanted to play drums, you know, listening to music, different forms of music as a kid, uh, and and uh, my influences uh, and, and, and people, friends who influenced me and encouraged me, uh, you know, starting off in the early days uh, and realizing that uh, uh, I needed to play drums. Uh, at, at school, I would be maybe tapping away on the desk with the two uh, wooden rulers and friends say, you, you, that's quite good, you, you ought to take it, you know, uh, just down the road here from the school, there's a, a, a second hand shop, there's a drum in there for two two quid, two pounds, um, and I, I say I bought that, the two pounds there was, was you know, quite a bit of money then, uh, when I was at uh, grammar school, and uh, so it built from there, and uh, and I started playing and, and, and sitting in with, with jazz, local jazz groups, and uh, Rock and roll had happened, of course, but I wanted to be a jazzer. But uh, 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 it just so happened that uh, uh, I was sitting at the the jazz club or, or, or a, 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 a play a working men's club where they had a six piece band, and I'd sit there all night on Saturday night. I won't go out with my friends because uh, the, the highlight of my Saturday night was to be invited onto, onto the drum kit and play three songs when the drummer got to the front and went to the front of the stage and sang what they call the Breakaway Blues, where he did three uh, Fats Waller songs, Ain't Misbehaving, Sunny Side of the Street, and uh, another one. Uh, and that was, the joy, I, that, that, was so uplif- that was so uplifting. I lived quite a long way from that club, but I'd, I'd, I'd run and skip home uh, after that. <laughs> feel, you know, I was, on, I was on cloud nine. So that was the encouragement. And then uh, I, I, I was able to afford a, a, a bigger drum set and uh, I'd be uh, playing with... It, it, there was a couple of big bands in the dance halls around here and I'd be depping, as they called it, when the main drummer was off. I'd sit in there. And uh, then uh, I was resident in a jazz club nearby, a small town nearby, and it got to the stage where um, a friend of mine said, hey, there's a, there's a, 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 drum, a drum seat going with a, with a, a, a young rock group, uh, an unknown, you know, just local kids. Oh, Saturday Night Rock is boring. But uh, I, I'm the, 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 the local uh, dance hall in Nelson, where I was, um, it was called the Nelson Imperial. It was known as Nelson Imp, and everybody played there, apart from Sinatra and, and Elvis. Uh, uh, Hendrix was there, the Beatles, the Stones, the Hollies, uh, you know, uh, it was our local place. Uh, and one uh, Saturday afternoon, a bop session, uh, I, I, I played with this rock group, and, and the contrast was <clears throat> on the Thursday night with a jazz club where you'd have about 50 or 60 people in tapping tap on the drinking the whatever the the, 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 the whiskey and sodas and stuff and, and looking cool this this Saturday afternoon there were about 300 girls in there hanging around the front of the stage I thought well it's, this is a no brainer uh, it, it's rock and roll for me more from Bobby Elliott coming up next week make sure you comment on our videos subscribe to our channel and share our videos pick up a t-shirt help support our channel this is Rock History Music <laughs>